Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. And if you tried to join the Facebook Live today, thank you for hanging in with us. Uh, I'm Joan Kosmichuk, a seasonal color, style, and confidence coach, and I'm here with my guest today, Janice Lamprin of Mature Beauty and Style. And we had a little bit of a snag um, in trying to do our live in that I could not invite my guest, and that's kind of missing the whole point. So we're now recording this um, not live, but then you'll be able to watch it at your leisure. So again, we thank you for your patience. And if anybody has technical uh, tips and helps for the future, I would greatly appreciate them. So welcome, Denise. Good to have you here. Hi, Joan. Thank you. It's great to be here. Okay, so Denise and I talk a lot about skin tone. Um, as color consultants, we are often um, conferring with one another about a particular client, trying to say, hey, you know, what, what are you seeing here? What am I, I missing? Um, so that's one way we talk about skin tones, but we also talk about our own skin tones, uh, which as you can see from this video are very different even though both Denise and myself are typed as springs in the seasonal color analysis system. And so um, we thought, you know, one of these days when we were having one of these really deep uh, dive discussions about skin tone, you know, we should <laughs> share some of this great stuff with our viewers. So that's uh, how we got to be here, where we are today. And um one of the things that's really uh, unique and special about the Kegel seasonal analysis, Suzanne Kegel seasonal analysis uh, system is that it starts and is built off of our skin tone. And this is something you don't find in every uh, system and there's good reason for that. So if you have a system that is pre-designed, meaning um, all of the light or bright springs get a particular set of colors, then that system is not going to be able to include a skin tone because as you can see, we all have, have such different uh, skin tones. That has to be a very personalized color analysis. So that is really the reason why skin tones are not included because there's just no way to include everybody's skin tone in a preset palette. The uh, unfortunate piece of that is that when you leave out the skin tone piece and you're not using that as your starting base, it can cause a color analysis to go very off. Um, and you may end up with colors that, yeah, you like or that you don't like, um, but those colors may or may not have anything to do with your personal harmony because nobody is really starting uh, with the core um, quality of your uh, skin tone. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But um, as you can see, my skin tone is kind of a very soft uh, peach. Uh, some, I'm a very highly colored uh, person. <laughs> and uh, so, of course, it makes sense that the skin tone color that I have been given um, in my analysis uh, reflects that. It reflects this higher uh, coloring in my skin. Mm -hmm. uh, Denise, why don't you tell us a little about your skin tone? Sure. So can you see that? Is that clear enough? Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. I know your lighter skin tone is, is the more gold tone. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. We can see it there. So what you see in that, um, in, in my skin tone is that there's an absence of hemoglobin that doesn't show up. Mm -hmm. I've got more of the carotene, which is yellow and orange and, and the melanin. And so that puts me in the golden category and uh, makes me very warm. So I think that's the first thing I really notice about my skin tone is that it's warm. What about you? What's, what's, well, my skin tone is warm too. I used to, I, I really struggled with my skin tone for many, many years before I had my colors done. I hated it actually, because when I was young and I went into the cosmetic departments, they all looked at my skin with absolute horror. Oh my gosh, there's so much color there. And so what they wanted to do was they wanted to get rid of that color. And um, because, you know, the perfect <laughs> face yeah. is always a winter. And so they would put like green or purple, um, primer on me and then you know plaster uh foundation. foundation on top and I would just look so pasty and ill um but they really wow. convinced me that my skin tone was not ideal mm -hmm. that my skin tone was somehow not 
pretty enough, uh, didn't meet the standard of beauty. And so when I was first given my, my skin tone, um, I looked at it and I said, I don't like that color. <laughs> and it's just going to make me look like an orange. And uh, I remember Kathy, who did my um, color analysis, she said to me, would you just go out and buy a $10 t-shirt and wear it and wear it for a few days and see how you feel about it? So I wanted to prove her wrong. I wanted a different skin tone. <laughs> so I went right up to the store and I got the skin tone t-shirt and I put it on. And almost immediately, people started complimenting me. Oh, you look so rested. Oh, that color is so pretty on you. And that was really hard for me because I had to see myself in a different light. I had to see myself not through the lens of these beauty experts, but through the lens of my own beauty. And it was a pivotal and transformational moment for me in terms of accepting who I was. I had spent so much of my life using fashion to try to be somebody else. And um, and that that was just like a really pivotal breakthrough moment. And I literally, I then started buying everything in my skin tone. <laughs> and it is the favorite color in my palette. Yes, it's it's. And I had a similar experience in that. I mean, just growing up as a person of color and feeling like hmm, I'm somehow inferior. And then when I had my first palette done many years ago. Uh, I was, are you sure you were spring? I thought springs had light hair and light skin. And so once again, I'm like outside the, um, the beauty scale. So this happens. And when we find our skin tone, it's as if we're part of the fold. We we are part of our own. We create our own part in this. You know, we become a part of it uniquely. Yeah. And I think there's some history there, isn't there, in terms of dark darker skin tones, um, browns and blacks, mm -hmm. uh, even Asian skin tones over the years, because the fashion industry kind of ignored you for a long time. Mm -hmm. And still does. And still there's room for improvement for all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I did a little bit of digging and researching on skin tones. And I found it interesting that Darwin said skin tone is one of the most important ways that people vary. Mm. and that um, our ancestors, yours, mine, all of us, started in equatorial Africa where they had lots of UV rays and built up the melanin and that's a natural skin tone. And uh, then what happened? They migrated to the Northern Poles. No UV rays and they lost their pigmentation. And so that's sort of the beginning of this rainbow of skin tones that we have, you know? And so our skin tone is really associated with human migration and evolution. Mm -hmm. So this skin here, you know, the clothing for our body is our history. And I just find that so fascinating. You know? Yeah, it is. It's completely fascinating. And um, I think that the fashion industry, you know, they came up with a color called nude. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people consider that in their mind as a skin tone, but that nude color doesn't match my skin. Doesn't um, match mine. <laughs> it does not match your skin. <laughs> Who's that really working for, huh? <laughs> right. And um, again, you know, it was defining a nude skin tone as being um, attributed to a particular type of skin tone, uh, European really, that was the considered at the time the ideal. And, you know, also we had dye limitations and we had uh, manufacturing limitations. Yes. And so there's lots of things, factors that went into that for sure. But we love the term skin tone versus nude because it's more inclusive. More inclusive. And, um, and also really the role of a nude color uh, is limited, isn't it? It's limited to those times when you maybe are dancing on stage and you want to appear nude in a bodysuit or if you uh, are looking for a shoe that's going to blend with your leg color so that you have um, an, you know, a look of, of your leg just going on forever. Um, but it's not really a helpful um, terminology when we're talking about skin tone, particularly in the field of seasonal color analysis. So we talk about skin tone light and dark or melatonin and uh, hemoglobin. Uh, we use those kind of distinguishing factors. Um, but I think what's really, really important um, to note is that what Suzanne was looking for in skin tone 
was she was looking for something that in the art world they call color intensity. Uh, mm -hmm. She called it color quality. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by that is that quality or intensity of a color that changes it. So uh, for some people, um, they need a different color quality than others. And that those color qualities tended to go uh, in line with seasons. And that's how Suzanne set it up. So we have for winter, we have um, pure or shaded with black. Those are the color qualities of a winter palette. Um, for the springs, like ourselves, our colors are either clear, that would be yours, yours are very clear, not quite into that pure, uh, that gets too strong for you, they need to be a little bit clearer. And for me, my colors are mostly tinted with white, some clear and tinted with white. Uh, that's the spring color or in color quality or color intensity. And then autumns would be toned or toasted uh, with brown usually. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes as we age, those um, muted colors become a little less browned and sometimes a little more grayed, but mostly still within that taupey brownie color. And then we have summers and they're the ones who get to wear the muted colors, but not all summers can wear muted with gray. Some need muted with taupe, some need muted with their complements. We have a lot of darker summers who need that mutation um, in their colors and that changes the color quality. So when we're looking at skin tone and we're holding up these little uh, fans or in you know, little uh, pieces of fabric to your skin tone, um, we're looking for a few things. And the first thing we're looking for is what does the color quality bring out in the person? Now, Suzanne and some others actually painted the skin tones. Um, and Suzanne had a whole formula. If she used these colors or those colors or whatever, it, that determined the season. Um, and I think that worked really well with for Suzanne, and that's because she was really genius at being able to see and identify that color quality or intensity in a person. But um, one of the dangers <laughs> with looking for skin tone can be that if you are not picking up the color quality correctly, it doesn't matter whether you paint it or not, if you're not seeing the color quality correctly, then uh, if you're not matching the skin tone correctly, uh, then you can be off. You can be off on the season or you can be off on the palette. So uh, that's that's really important to note. Um, so the skill of the person who is analyzing your skin tones and choosing your skin tones is really uh, important. Um, and particularly, I think, Denise, would you say this is even more important in uh, women of color? Absolutely. And, you know, we're not, historically, we haven't been trained and we're not as aware uh, and our eyes haven't been trained to see this beautiful violet that's the undertone of a darker skin and how to create that skin tone for them so that they have this beautiful palette that's skewed to their skin tone. You know, that's mm -hmm. really the crux of the, the darker skin tone and creating that palette, you know, and, and getting them dialed in. So they're not too ashy, you know, so they don't feel grayed, you know, they really have, their skin is allowed to glow, you know, isn't that the role of the skin tone is to allow yes. it to glow. Yeah. And it's a similar problem we have with Caucasian skin tones, because sometimes as we age, people's health or their sun damage, so you can have rosacea. Um, and often what I notice in, uh, you know, palettes that have not been given the right skin tone when they have rosacea is that um, the person mistook the rosacea for the skin tone blush. Uh, yeah. hemoglobin instead of recognizing that that was actually not something you want to highlight in the person. Uh, it's the same with someone with a sallow complexion. And this is um, true of Asian skin tones as well. Um, Chinese, Japanese, Korean. Uh, you do not want a color that is going to highlight the yellowness, right? I mean, nobody wants to look yellowed. <laughs> um, you're looking for that color that actually, you know, bypasses that sallowness and brings out the person. And I think in general, when you're doing a skin tone analysis, um, you're, you know, you can go matchy matchy. Um, like I said, that's not a, a particularly helpful color because that might not even match the color on your face. Um, but what you're trying to do is find that color that blends 
all of the skin tone together, but also gets underneath mm -hmm. to the quality or intensity that that person needs to really bring them forward. Exactly. Um, yeah. Now, we we use our skin tone colors a little bit differently. And um, I think that is across the board. If you have a colored skin tone, mm -hmm. highly colored skin tone, uh, it's going to be a little bit different than someone who has a more neutral skin tone. Mm -hmm. So a lot of winters have a very white, pale complexion. That's a neutral skin tone. Um, and that can be true of some summers and uh, and definitely all brown and black. We know brown and black is a neutral. So all of those skin tones would be considered to be more neutral skin. Mm -hmm. And we can also throw gray in there, a gray eye or gray hair, and that would often fall into the neutral. Uh, yes, for a whole neutral. Um, yeah. 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 Um, but I think just for skin tone, you're either going tone, to be yes. a colored skin tone or you're going to be a neutral skin tone, mm -hmm. one of the others. Yes. So Denise, what you have been a skin tone. <laughs> I do. I do. And so why don't you show us a little bit how you utilize your skin tone in your wardrobe? So uh, what I think of with my skin tone is, am I going to uh, support it and use those same colors or am I going to enhance it? So I have a light and a dark. And so that gives me some leeway. Do I wanna go light today? Do I wanna go dark or do I want to combine them? So if I want to support my skin tone, I will use these colors, light skin tone and dark skin tone. And that helps me feel very grounded. It helps me feel like I'm supporting all of me and that I am stable. Stable is a really good word, you know, because I'm working with who I am. I, that's a really great point. We know that the role of neutrals is to ground us. Mm -hmm. Why we, you know, those who have um, neutrals in their palette, they use those colors as sort of grounding anchoring colors. My skin tone is very colorful <laughs> and it does not make me feel grounded. <laughs> It makes me feel really pretty, hmm. uh, really soft, um, really approachable, very natural. And so when I wear my skin tone, um, one of the things that is really important for me is the choice of the fabric. I like um, things that are soft and natural and kind of feel like, um, so this is a a sweater I just recently picked up and it's got a little bit of luminescence in it. It's got a soft cable um, and you can see how soft and pretty uh, that color is going to be on me. I mean, I will wear my skin tone um, in a hat uh, just to Fabulous. add that softness around my face. I'll wear it in a shoe. Um, this one has got my, my light and, and darker skin tones in it. Uh, to draw the attention back up to my face. Uh, I've even been known to uh, oh, very occasionally wear a you know, pretty scarf in my skin tone. But you can see the fabrics and the luminosity uh, in some of those fabrics or the softness really makes a difference. It does. Um, I, I love to wear sweaters in my skin tone um, and jackets, uh, anything that has a little bit of that feminine styling to it. Um, really ties in. So I think one of the things that a person has to learn, um, you know, we, we give this blanket statement often as color um, consultants, which is like, oh, your skin tone, it makes you vulnerable and it uh, is good color to wear if you want to appear rested and approachable. And all of those things are true. But how we achieve those is very different. Yes. So I know you, you, for example, use um, employ prints a lot for your skin tone. Do you want to? I do. And yeah. I just wanted to say, you know, you were talking about color quality earlier and how the color quality of your skin tone brings out your femininity. I mean, just showing those examples. Mm -hmm. Very good. You can see the femininity that and the prettiness. It just comes, you know, really yeah. nice. So, yes, prints. So brown. I'm brown, you know, and if I wanted to, to expand that a little bit, you know, and include my eyes and hair, just, just for a moment, uh, how do I break that tie? I'm just sort of brown, brown with a black. 
And I discovered through uh, trial and error that a print would pull those elements together. So this is light skin tone, dark skin tone, and my hair color. And so as you know, Joan, and as our clients have mentioned to us how good they feel wearing inherent, their inherent color quality. And I'm stepping out of the box here just for a moment because uh, the skin tone is really, really a, a way for me to express myself. But because it's neutral, I had to find a way to work around it a little bit, you know? So it's either supporting it or using it in color. And so if I want to enhance it, I would take this carotene that I have, yellow and orange, and go a, that's warm and go a little bit cooler with my blue hyacinth in my, my palette. So I had to think about how I wanted to work with my skin tone and break up the brown, if that makes sense. It makes so much sense. And I think this is one of the things that you're absolutely brilliant at. And I think is, um, is something that I try to teach in my uh, course exploring your color palette when we get into skin tones is that you really have to personalize your skin tone for you you have to figure out what are the fabrics that work for you do you need it in a print or a pattern do you uh, want to wear it in accessories do you know how are you going to use that skin tone um, some people really do not like the vulnerability that they feel in their skin tone and so they always pair it with something that gives them a little bit more of a shield. Yes. Um, and the way you have shown that another color can enhance your skin tone as well, um, that can sometimes be a way that people can back into their skin tone if they're not really comfortable with wearing their skin tone in a full garment or even in a full top. Um, so I think that it's really significant that with all of our colors on our palette, that we understand what that color does for us mm -hmm. as an individual versus mm -hmm. what it does um, stereotypically for everybody. Um, always we're unique. And so everybody will use their, their colors differently. I think it also really is impacted by your style essence, um, your style aesthetic, because if I was not kind of uh, liked a feminine, romantic, sporty style, um, then I would have to use my skin tone differently, wouldn't I? Yes, you would. Imagine if if my style was dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how would I use my skin tone if I had a dramatic style? Can you, let's just play I'm with that. To you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm your client. I'm saying, well, you've just given me this really lovely little soft skin tone, but I want a dramatic look. How am I going to use this in my dramatic wardrobe? Well, let's pick another color, a color mm. and that's a little bit, I mean, it's in your, it's a middle value and let's pair it with something like this. Something like that. Yes. That's your version of perhaps drama or a little higher contrast that may be on the edge of your ability to go with your contrast, but it brings in, if you were to compare those two colors versus your skin tone, you can def there. Yeah, now that's, that's yeah, dramatic. That would be yes. more dramatic. Yes. Yeah. That's a great idea. Also, um, fabric, like yes. you said, I could wear my skin tone in a very tight leather <laughs> uh, or lace uh, dress, perhaps, which yes. would, uh, that could be uh -huh. dramatic alluring or alluring dramatic. Um, mm -hmm. I might, yeah, choose um, some accessories that, you know, like a- High very, heels. Yeah, high mm -hmm. heels, and, you know, incredibly fancy um, hat. dramatic hat. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's there's some different ways. So, you know, we we have to take that into consideration as well. How are you going to use this to express your individual style aesthetic? Yeah, and then you also have to keep in mind that you're doing that within your seasonal uh, style lines as well. Like there's so many layers here, right? And this is why we talk about skin tone a lot. Like, oh, I think I'm going to give this a try or, you know, what about this? And um you know, a skin tone in a chiffon fabric or a skin tone in a velvet fabric um, can give some very different yeah, looks. 
or a skin tone in leather mm -hmm. or skin tone in suede uh, in a crisp cotton or linen. Um, I love, uh, this is a little linen jacket that I have and, um, and I love it, but it is a different texture and it gives it just a little bit of a different feel uh, mm -hmm. than something a little bit softer in a sweater. Or if I take and put my skin tone in a denim fabric, again, mm -hmm. it changes the look and feel of it uh, to a bit more sporty, a bit more casual. So, and then combining them too gives a different look. So it if you does, want yes, mm -hmm. exactly. If you combine your skin tone with your dramatic or you combine it with your formal neutral or you combine it with your related red or um, your eye color, yeah, you get a whole lot of different yes. Yes, Love. your jeans with a silk blouse. I mean, the right. two contrasting types of fabrics. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, that we um, can choose proportions of our skin tone. So whether we're going to have, like you and I today are wearing 100% uh, skin tone, but if we decided to change that up, we could you know, have one third of the outfit in our skin tone and two thirds in another color then it's going to change the look and feel of the skin tone as well. Completely, yes. So, well, I know we've just touched on a few things here. It's just been a highlight, a little bit of a teaser for you all. But um, if you are interested in learning more about uh, skin tone, um, we're going to have links here on the post where you can click and go to our pages. I have a course, as I mentioned, exploring your color palette that goes into each of the colors on your palette in detail and gives you lots of information around how that color was chosen by Suzanne uh, originally, then by your color consultant in particular, and uh, then how you might wear it and pair it and gives you lots of exercises to try and things to check out. Um, so if you have a color palette already done, then you might want to take that course because it's really going to give you um, some helpful information. If you are interested in dark skin tones in particular, Denise is your woman. Um, <laughs> and you might want to see her for consult because she has a very deep level understanding. Um, very often, uh, and I, I've learned a lot from Denise and from some of the other um, darker skinned color consultants in our industry, but as the Caucasian, we have to really learn to understand and to see dark skin tones. We can't apply the rules of Caucasian skin tones to dark skin tones and expect the same result. And, um, and we see a lot of times when that happens and it just leads people off on all kinds of, you know, um, wrong direction all pathways yes we yeah want to and, and I know Denise you've experienced that yourself over the years and you've been tight probably every season right <laughs> <laughs> because people get um they, they get confused wow. yeah yes. they get confused and they're not quite sure how to deal with a dark skin tone so uh, Denise uh, is available for color consults for that uh, or for Caucasian skin tone as well um Asian, brown, black, we're here for all of it. And then uh, in addition, if you would like to um, learn more about this, you can just message us and say, this was fascinating. Can you tell us more about X, Y, Z? And if we ever figure out how to do live videos, <laughs> we might be back yeah. with a live one next time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So have I missed anything, Denise? Can you think of anything that... Oh, there's so much to talk about, but I think that you've touched on um, the basics and the idea that um, skin tone is where it's at. Mm -hmm. And we want everyone to have the experience of knowing their skin tone and being able to wear it with confidence and enjoy it. And when you do that, boy, it's a gift to the whole world. People look at you and say, oh, I want that. Yes, visual harmony is very attractive. And just as we're closing out, I'm just going to share um, just some of the variety of skin tones that there are in uh, the world <laughs> of seasonal okay. color analysis. There is absolutely no limit. So don't think you're going to have the one skin tone that we cannot um, find. We definitely have many, many options um, to find the right color. Mm -hmm the right fabric mm -hmm. that is going to make you 
and your skin glow and make it so that you truly love the skin you're in. Thank great. you. For, thank you so much, uh, Denise, for joining me. And thank you to all for your patience in waiting for this um, recording because we just couldn't go live. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we made it. We were here. We made it. We, yes. we overcome the technical challenges. Our expertise really is in color, not technology. Not technology yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't even pretend. <laughs> No. but uh, you are going to find yourself in good hands if what you need is a seasonal color analysis. So check us out. Come see us. Uh, Denise is in LA. I am in Palm Desert, Palm Springs area, and we would love to connect with you. Love to see Bye you. Bye for now. Bye for now.